Hello, everyone. My name is Eileen. And in today's webinar, we are going to go over how to create a new project in Red Team Go and send out your bid invites. Okay, so we're going to get started. Uh, again, my name is Eileen. I am one of the implementation specialists here at Red Team Go. Uh, on our call, we also have Ted Adams, one of our other implementation specialists. So we are going to get started. So I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Alrighty, so here, here we are, we are in red team. So in today's um, webinar session, we are going to cover the bidding status within red team go. So we're going to have an emphasis on all aspects of the pre-construction pre -construction project, excuse me, beginning with the initial setup of creating a new project and then sending out the bid solicitations and creating your proposal all within red team go. All right. So first off, we are going to create our project. Now in Red Team, there are a couple of ways that we can create our project. One being right here, as soon as you log in, you're going to be brought to your global dashboard. So to create a new project, you can simply select the Add Project button over here on the left. Another way to create your project is if you need to perhaps duplicate information from a previous project, you have the ability to come right over here into your projects. You locate the project that you need to duplicate. You select the ellipse icon, and then you would select duplicate. Um, doing this will allow you to copy over the estimate information. Uh, you can also copy over information such as uh, specifications and drawings and photos that are uploaded in your plan room. But in this case, we're just going to add a brand new project from scratch. Okay, so to do that, we're going to select the add project button over here. And then we just need to fill in some basic information. Okay, so anything with an asterisk is something that's necessary for you to fill out or select now. Okay, so we'll just give our project a name. Uh, now, if <clears throat> you don't have a, a final name for your project just yet. You can give it a name, and once your project has been created in Red Team, it will allow you to change it if needed. Okay. Now, right over here, you're going to select your cost code set. So Red Team does have the 16 and 48 division cost codes. So you'll select the one that you want to use. And then from here, Red Team is going to ask you to select an estimate template. Okay, because Red Team does come pre-built with four, I'm sorry, five estimate templates, uh, and you do have the ability to create your own estimate templates. You know, we do have a lot of training videos in our knowledge sensors, so if you go right over there, you will be able to watch any videos on how to create estimate templates. Okay. All righty, so we're going to select our template, and then we're going to select who's our estimator here within Red Team Go. Then if you do have multiple companies, uh, you do have the ability to select which company you're using for this project. Okay. And then right over here, you're just going to answer all of these questions. So it's asking, will you be um, act as the construction manager as an advisor? Uh, here you have the ability to select how many owners there are for this project. And then here's where you're just going to put in your owner's name. Okay. So my owner information has already been added to Red Team in my contacts, so it's automatically filled out this information for me. Okay. Now, if your owner does have a rep, you have the ability to specify that here. And then we're just going to move on, and we can select our GC bid due date, and then our sub bid due date. If you don't know these uh, dates right now, you can fill these out later. But uh, putting this information in will help you later on when it comes to your bid solicitation. Alrighty, and then here we're just going to put in our project address. Alrighty, and once you're ready, we'll just select add project.
Okay, so by default, Red Team will automatically, once it's created your project, bring you straight to your bid worksheet. Okay, but before building my bid worksheet and before sending out <clears throat> my bid solicitations to my subcontractors, I want to work on my plan room. Okay. So I'm just going to come right over here on the left. We're going to select plan room. And in here is where we can upload our drawings, if we have any photos, any information that we want our subcontractors to see when we send them our bid solicitations, we can upload all of that information here. I'm just going to come right over here to my drawings, and then we're going to upload a set. Okay, and before I move forward, I do want to pause and ask if anyone has any questions. All right, so we're going to move forward with uploading our drawings. To do that, we're going to select the blue upload button right here. And now Red Team gives you two options when uploading your drawings. So I can upload, let's say I have one large uh, PDF that's got 50 separate sheets in it. Red Team will allow me to upload that PDF and split all of the pages for me. That way, when my subcontractors are looking at the drawings, they can go directly to the drawing that they need to reference rather than having to open up that one large document and scanning through everything. Okay. So you do have that option up here. And then you also have the option to just upload the file without splitting and scanning if needed. So I'm going to split and scan my photos or my drawings because I do want to show you what Red Team also does for you when it comes to doing that. So here you're just going to give it a name and then you're going to um, uh, enter your date. Um, if this, uh, you can enter the version or revision name here and then you can drag and drop or just click to browse and find your drawings. Okay, so now we're going to move forward and upload these files. Okay, so you can see here um, it, it says that the upload was successful and the plans are being split currently in the background. So we can wait here, or let's say we're uploading a lot of drawings all at once and we have a lot of things to do. You can close and continue and do other things in Red Team. You don't have to wait here. Okay, now an email will be sent to you. So like I said, if you don't want to wait because you've uploaded a lot of drawings, you will get an email from Red Team letting you know when the drawings have been uploaded. So we're just going to close and continue. And the drawings that I've uploaded aren't that large. So let's come right over here to our progress bar and see where we are. There we go. See, my drawings are already ready for me to select. So I'm going to go in here, select process. Okay. Now, one of the great teams of, or one of the great things about Red Team with our drawings is right here, I can go through and tell Red Team this is where my sheet number is. This is where the drawing name is, if needed, you know, version name or revision name and, and date. I do that on one sheet and then Red Team will go through all of the sheets that I've uploaded and autofill the information for me. Okay. So let me show you how we do that. We're just going to select the pencil icon here. Okay. And then we're just going to come over here and with your mouse, you're going to highlight the field that you want Red Team to read for you. There we go. Okay, now we'll go into the drawing name. Same thing, select that pencil icon. Then you're just going to highlight, and there you go. Perfect. Okay, and then same thing with your date. Um, you can highlight or you can enter your date, and then once you're ready, we're going to select, confirm, and go to review. Okay, and again, Red Team gives you that same option. It has to go through all the sheets now, so we can wait here or we can close and continue. Okay, so just to show you, this is your progress bar. So it is going to go through all eight pages. And once it's done, this will be highlighted and we'll be able to review and approve. There we go. So while we're waiting on this, again, I just want to open this up. Does anyone have any questions? Okay. All right. And you know what? While this is processing, let's just X out of here. Let's upload some photos. Okay. So if we have any site photos, we'll just come right over here. And these photos are going to be added to our plan room. 
Uh, so if the owner wants to look at the plan room or the architect or any of your subcontractors, they'll be able to come into the plan room and take a look at the photos. Uh, you can create multiple albums. So I can create a pre-construction album. There we go. Click right into there and then we can upload our photos here. So we'll just select upload photos. Same thing, we can drag and drop. You can enter the date that the photos were taken and you can put in the time. Once you're done, you'll just select save. You can come in here and your photos are here. So you do also have the option to send your photos out. You can use Red Team to send your photos out to anyone if needed. You can send the entire album. You do have the option right here to delete photos, edit album details, or just leave them on the plan room for everyone to take a look at. Okay, so let's go back to our drawings. Let's take a look at our progress log. And here we go. So all eight pages are ready for our review. So we're just going to select review. Okay, and you can see all of our sheets have been scanned. They've all been named, okay, but they're not on our plan room yet. So we want to select them, approve them. Now we want to publish them. Once published, they're available to view on the plan room. Okay, so if we drop down, you can see here's our bid set. Here are all the drawings. Uh, this option right here is going to allow the drawings to be on the con or the, the link on the contracts. And for them to also be shown on the plan room. So if you don't want the drawings for any reason to be shown on the plan room or to be linked in the contracts, you can just unselect these buttons right here. Okay. Any questions before we move forward? All right. Okay, so before we go over to our bidding, let me bring you over to our project dashboard real quick. So when you logged into Red Team, our dashboard looked a little bit different because that was our global dashboard. Now, each project has its own dashboard here. Okay, so right here's your project information. So you can click right in here to update project information if needed. Uh, this is where you can change the project name as I mentioned previously. Okay, uh, you can make any edits to the address. And then here's some additional information that you can enter. So if the architect has their own project number, you can enter that here. Same thing if the uh, the owner has their own project number that they want reference on things, you can put their thing in here as well. Now, right now we're in the bidding phase of our project. So you have the ability to also keep track of the probability of this contract. So let's say I'm, pre I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident I'm going to put this as a 90% probability of contract. Okay. So here you have some additional information. Uh, this is information that you can fill in now. The, uh, the payment due is X amount of days from bill approval, or you can do this later. Uh, you do have the ability to enter any notes. And right here, you have a live video feed link that you can paste here, and it will share it on your plan room as well. Now, if you do ever want to just copy the plan room link to send, uh, let's say, to the clients or any of your subs, you do have the ability right here to click this link. And then this is the link for this project specific plan room. Okay, just going to click update. Okay, now within here, you do have some more information. Uh, we haven't filled out our our bid sheet yet, as we are filling that out, this information is going to update, okay? Same thing over here. Uh, this is where you're going to be able to see the phase of your project where you currently are. So we are in the bidding phase. This is also where you'll be able to move your project forward in Red Team. So I'm not going to click this now, but when we are ready, let's say we send our proposal out to the owner, we would move on to pending. And that's how you do that here. So here's additional information. Again, once we start sending out those bid invites, all of this information is going to get filled out for us. Okay. You do also have the ability to create uh, to-do items 
and tasks for yourself here in Red Team just for this project. So if you want that reminders to send out the bid invites, you can give yourself those reminders right here. Ready? And then you can just see this is some additional information as we're creating our RFIs. Uh, Red Team's keeping track of that information, our submittals, our meetings. It's going to let us know if anything is overdue or if it is coming up due in the next seven days and so on. Okay. And then down here, this is your project team. Okay, so right here, my GC team, this is my company. All right, so I just have myself right here as the estimator, but I do have the ability to click that icon right there and I can add other contacts. So I can add my accountant to it if I'd like. Next, and the information that we're entering here, uh, you, you're able to generate this um, on a report if needed to give to your, your client. So you can see here's my GC team and then right here, it's my owner. Okay, so their information is already filled in because I entered it when I created my project. Uh, if I have any architects or engineers, I do have the ability to add them here as well. Okay. All right, so let's get started on creating our bid worksheet. So we're going to come over here on the left to bidding. We're going to come over to our worksheet. So I selected my template. So this is auto filled out, but I do have the ability to go through here and make changes. All right. So if I want to remove a particular cost code, I have the ability to come right over here and select this trash can. So this trash can will remove a cost code from my bidding worksheet. And then we have some other options. So let's come down to rep carpentry. Okay. Right here, actually, countertops. Well, we'll do this. This little arrow pointing down, and this is telling me that uh, this rep carpentry cost code and the, the countertops have an assembly line item. So if I just click that to expand it, you'll see they aren't filled out right now. Let's check this one. Okay, here we go. So countertops. I have three items listed under countertops. So that little arrow is what allows you to create an assembly line item all under one cost code. Okay, so if you want to break down your material and you want to list all of that, but you don't want to give it its own cost code, you want it to all fall under the cost code, you make your assembly line items. Okay, so to create that, a new assembly line item on a cost code, you would just come over. So let's take a look at millwork, select the arrows to drop that down, and then we're going to select add. Righty, and then you can come right over here and begin filling in this information. And then you can just keep on going down, adding more cost codes, or I'm sorry, more assembly line items as you go. Okay, now if you've built out this assembly line item and you've realized that this is something that you want to show up on this cost code by default for all projects, whenever used, you would just click these two default buttons. So now if I create another project and I use this millwork subcontract cost code, it's going to automatically have these assembly line items built in, just like countertops did and rough carpentry. You do have the ability to move them around just by selecting these icons. Now another icon that's right beside it is this notes icon. So if we select this notes icon, this is where we're going to be able to add, and especially for our subcontract line items, what the scope of work is. What do we want our subcontractor to bid on for this project? So I can select create new. And I can put in here the scope of work. Okay, now the information that I'm putting here when I send out my bid invite to my subcontractor for this particular cost code, they're going to be able to see all of this information. Okay. Now, if I want this particular line item uh, to be a, uh, I'm sorry, if I want this particular note, I apologize, to be a saved note that sticks to this cost code, uh, just like when I was showing you for the um, assembly line items, when you're creating the note, what you'll do is you'll say, you'll select save add to list, save note, and 
And then whenever I select this cost code, I'll be able to select it. So you can see here, shop samples. This is a save note. I can apply that directly to this one as well. Once we're ready, we're just going to select done. So any questions on that? Okay, we're going to move forward. Alrighty, so another option right here is the gavel icon, and I'm going to show you what that means in just a minute. So once we're done working through our bid worksheet, uh, going through filling out all of the, you know, the uh, a note scope of work, what we want our subcontractors to bid on, we can send out our bid invites. Okay. Now to send out our bid invites, we would come over here to invitations. And Red Team wants us to look up our, our subcontractors. But before we do that, let's just X out of here. And let's come over to the invitation email. We're going to select preview. So Red Team automatically generates the email. You had the ability to go through and change the email how, however you feel that it needs to be changed. But this is what it looks like. So Red Team will generate this document. When we send our, send our bid invites to our subs, they're going to get an email with this document in it. They're also going to get a link that will bring them directly to their subcontractor portal in Red Team Go, where they can view the drawings that we've sent them and they'll be able to bid on the project. And this is the link that they would select that would bring them to the, uh, I'm sorry about that, that would bring them to the plan room. That link doesn't work right now because this is just a, a test. Okay, but I can edit this email by coming in here and going through, I can move things around if needed. I can add additional information. Let me end my tour, it's not letting me do anything. Okay, there we go. So yes, we can come in here, we can, Edit it as we feel please. Okay. And this is going to be the um, email subject. So whatever, you know, when we send these emails out, this is what the subject will be. So if you want to change that, you can go through here and change it. Alrighty. If you have anything that you want to attach to your bid invitation email, you do have right here this add attachment button. Um, so if there are any additional documents that you want to supply the subcontractor with, you do have the ability to put that in here. Okay. Once we're ready, we're going to come back over to our invitation list. All right. Now we want to look for our subcontractors. Who do we want to send out these invites to? So we're going to set our filters. Uh, Red Team allows you to send reminders to them. So remember when we were creating the project, we selected the sub bid due date. So we can send them a reminder 48 hours before that due date, or you can give them less time or more time, whatever you need. And they'll just get an email. Okay. Uh, right here are our filters. So if I leave this at 100 miles, it's going to look for all of my subcontractors that are within 100 miles of this particular zip code, which is the zip code for my project. So if there is no limit, we'll just select no limit. You do have other filters that you can apply. Red Team allows you to rank your subs. So you do have the ability to select, you know, make sure that you own, let's say you want subs that you've only worked with in the past. We would unselect no history. And then here, if this is a project that let's say uh, it needs to be union supplied sub subcontractors, we would select a union or a veteran or DBA. Okay. Now, once we're ready, we're going to select apply. And now Red Team is going to go through our entire database looking for all of our subs that are going to fall within this criteria. There we go. So now you can see. 30, okay, so this number 31, if we select drop down, that means Red Team has found 31 subcontractors in our system that have this cost code 01746.s, final cleanup, within their profile, listed under their trades. Okay. When you're ready, 
you do have the ability to select send. Now this is gonna send all 308. You don't have to do that. You can come through here and you can pick and choose. So let's come over to Millwork. So that's the one that we filled out. Okay, and here we go. So here are all of our subs. If I just wanna send the invites just for Millwork right now, I'm not ready to send all 308. I just wanna get pricing for Millwork. I can select send all. If I want to remove any of these subs, I can come through and select remove. Let's say I know I don't want to work with some of them. And that's all we do. We'll just go down the list. Right. Now let's say, oh, there we go. Okay. So I just want to show you, I clicked down. So red team is going to ask for this sample sub, everything cup, uh, subcontractor, even though we're under Millwork. It's going to ask them to bid on all of these items. The reason why is because I have all of these items in my, my estimate, all of these line items, all of these cost codes are in my estimate and all of these cost codes are also in the trades that are listed under my subcontractor's profile. So this particular subcontractor is able to bid on all of these items. Okay. Now, if I want to remove any of these, like specialty, I would just, you know, if I don't want them to bid on it, I would just come down. I can delete it that way right here and remove it. And then it'll remove them from specialties down below. Righty. But once we're ready to send, like I said, we can just come right over here and select send all. Okay. Let me, I just want to, there we go. Okay, it's letting me know that I'm sending eight invitations from my list. Do I want to proceed? And I'm going to say yes. Let me just go right back to that. Sorry about that. Uh, but while I'm doing this, again, does anyone have any questions? Everyone's following, following along? Okay. Oh, I believe it actually sent them already. Or maybe not. One second. Sorry about that. I think it has a, a pop up. Okay, here we go. Send all. Yes. Okay. All right. So now my invitation emails are going to be sent to all of my subs. All right. As they're being sent to my subcontractors and my subcontractors are replying to, to their sub invites, I'm going to get emails from Red Team Go letting me know that they're replying. Uh, now, an, another way I can also check on that is if I come into bidding invitations, and then come over to invitation responses, Red Team's keeping track of all of that information for you here. Okay. So we can see, let's scroll on down. They haven't viewed their, their bids yet, but we have sent them. Now, I'm going to just show you what your subcontractor is going to see. Here we go. So here's the email that your subcontractor is going to get. Here's that letter. And I'll just select View Drawings and RSVP. Hey, Eileen, I'm sorry. That's not showing on the screen. Oh, is it not? I'm sorry. One second. Let me get back. Start all and start showing my screen again. Sorry about that. Thank you for letting me know. You're welcome. Okay, can everyone see my screen now? I'm in um, an email invitation to bid from Eileen Washko. Ted, do you see that? Sorry. Um, yes, we can see. It. Yes. Okay, perfect. All righty. So this is the email that you're going to receive from Red Team, or I'm sorry, that the subcontractor is going to receive from Red Team when we ask them to bid on our project. So to bid on the project, they're just going to select View Drawings and RSVP. That link is going to bring them right over here. One second. So pull up. There we go. So here are all the drawings. Okay, so they can come down here. They can select a drawing. And they can view it if needed, print it. Okay. okay. 
All right, so they have the option right here to say yes, they intend to bid, no, or maybe. And they do also have the ability right here to select their bid. And I just wanna show you before we submit the bid, um, the drawings, or I'm sorry, the photos that we uploaded are right here. So we can view all those photos if needed. Uh, we'll just need to log in. Okay, I'm having an issue right now, but that would bring them to their their um, the plan room and they would be able to view the photos. Right now, this isn't the actual plan room. This is just their bidding link, okay? But they, they have the ability to view the drawings, download them and so on. Now to actually submit the bid, what they're going to do is select right here, submit bid. Okay, now red team has all of those cost codes. Remember I told you that um, this, particular subcontractor has many cost codes and trades listed under their profile. So they can come down here and choose to bid on these, or you know, I just want them to bid on the millwork so they can come here and put that information in. Okay, they can put in their amount here. Here's the information that I, I noted in the notes. Okay, they can click comments. If they have any comments, they can uh, put in their scope of work. Then up here, if they have a quote, they can select upload their quote. I'm just going to upload a, a document for now. But their quote will be uploaded and attached. And then once they're ready, they're just going to select submit bid to GC. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, you're going to get an email letting you know that they bid on the project. Um, also, if we come back into Red Team, and I just want to make sure you can, everyone can see my screen. I'm back in Red Team. Yes, ma'am, we're showing. Perfect. All right. So let's go back to our invitations, right? So I'm going to go to bidding, invitations. I want to go to my invitation responses. And here we go. So it's already updated. Everything subcontractor has the intention of bidding. Yes. The bid submit date is there. They included their attachment. We can view it if we need to. Right there. It's all here, right? So some great information that Red Team will allow you to keep track of. Now, if you've got your subcontractors that uh, they're old school, or let's say they're just busy that day and they promise they're going to reply, but they do have a bid for you and they send it to you or they give you a number over the, the phone. You do have the ability to come in here and say and, and put in their values. So the way that we would do that, and I'll show you in just a minute. Okay. So we'll come back into our bidding. We're going to come into our bidding worksheet. And I want to show you what happens to that mill work cost code. And see that this gavel has shown up and I'll show you what that gavel is. Okay, so now with mill work, if I click on this gavel, everything subcontractors bid is already entered in there. Okay, so let's say CS Builders, Alma emailed me her bid. She, she didn't use Red Team, but she wants to get her bid in on time. I can come right in here and just enter her bid. And I can do the same thing for all of my subs. Ready? If you need to make an adjustment to this line item, so let's say, you know, this subcontractor, everything sub gave me a really good deal. I, but I want to, you know, fluff that a little bit. I can do, I can add 5,000 and it'll change it right there to, to 20,000. Okay. Now. Now that we have all of our bids in, let's say only three subcontractors have decided to bid. When we're ready to award this bid to our subcontractor, or not award to it, but when we're ready to say that this is the value that we're going to apply to our bid estimate, we are going to select the number right there. Okay. Now, 
if I just X out of here, we can see that $20,000 is there. And you're gonna do this for all of your cost codes, for all of your subcontractor cost codes that you're you know, sending out your bids to. Um, or you have the ability to just come in here and fill out the information as you feel pleased. Okay, so any, any questions on sending out bid invites and filling out your, your bidding worksheet with those uh, bid invitations? Nope, oh, all right. And now I do wanna show you one more thing. We're gonna come over here to buyout because for Millwork, remember I, I added that $500, but I know that the subcontractor only bid 15,000. I'm gonna come into buyout because when I later on move my project in progress, I don't want to, I don't want the subcontract to be 20,000 because it really isn't, it should just be 15,000. I added that 500. I'm going to come into buyout. I'm going to find the cost code. Oh, oh, carpentry. Sorry about that. We're going to find the cost code and then I'm going to fix that value right there by 500. Okay. Because that was the amount that I added for myself or no 5,000. Okay. So later on, when we move our project to in progress, the subcontractor bid 15,000, my buyout is 5,000. Okay. Any questions? Oh, alrighty. Okay, now before we move forward, I wanna also show you, you do have the ability to add cost codes in here. We did use an estimate template. So if you want to add additional cost codes, you're just going to select this add or remove cost items. Okay, so these are all my cost codes that are in here on the right. And these are the cost codes that are not on this particular bid. So if I want to add them, I'm just going to select it and it's gonna push it over. If I want to remove any, I would same thing, click it and it pushes it back over to the left. And we can go down and do that for all of our divisions. And you do have the ability right here to uh, search cost code so that you don't have to scroll around. It brings you right down to it. Ready. Okay. Um, another, op some other options that you have are right here. We have alternates. So let's say your um, customer is interested in maybe adding, let's say a water feature, uh, but he's not sure yet. He, he wants the option, but that's not what he wants on his contract just yet. He wants the, you know, he just wants to know how much is it going to cost. We're going to come over here and we can add an alternate. Okay. Uh, you can select an estimate template if you want to, or you can say none, and then we're just going to build it ourselves, right? So we've got water feature, and now we're going to go through and we can add our cost codes right here. Um, yeah. And we'll just add something. Okay. And then you can go through and you can continue adding more cost codes. And then once it's in here, it'll be the same thing as when we were doing our bid worksheet. I want to get pricing from my subcontractor so we can send out those um, bid invites with this. And same thing as before, if you come right here to the gavel, if I already have that bid invite or I know what the cost is going to be, let's say this wasn't a subcontractor cost, it, it was uh, my own GC cost, I could put that cost in there myself. And that's how you add your alternates. Right, you have the ability to also add units to your your project. Okay, so let's say it's one large building or one large strip mall, and then uh, each individual unit would be um, each individual apartment or each individual um, company. You can add those, and then you do also have the ability to create and add phases here. Okay, and we do have a lot of videos in our not in our. Um, Knowledge Center, let me show that to you very quickly. Uh, you're going to select your name in the upper right hand corner and go to our learning center. Okay, from there, we have videos, we have articles, everything that will uh, 
dive a lot deeper into adding alternate units and phases. Okay, all righty. So uh, the next thing that we're going to do is now begin building our proposal for our customer. Because let's say we've, we're done sending out our bid invites and we've already worked on our worksheet and our contract value is, is good to go. Oh, one other thing, I'm very sorry. What I did not show you in here are your markups and that's very important, so I apologize. Right here, setting your markups. So you do set your default markups in the administration, but for every project, you have the ability to um, change your markups, okay? So when you select set markups, you've got your labor burden up here. This is your default value. You can change it for this project. Here's where you've got your sales tax. Now, right now, sales tax is only applying to material and equipment. Um, if you need to, you can change it so that sales tax applies to, or this percentage applies to um, subcontract, labor, other, and overhead if needed. Right here's your general liability percentage or your insurance. And then you have your overhead and your profit. And then you do have this line item down here uh, for project sales tax. Uh, you can actually, sorry, let me go back into here. You can actually change this if needed. Okay. So if you needed to change it to say contingency, uh, whatever you want it to say down here, you can change that right there and then you'll put in the percentage and you do also have the ability to calculate the percentage yourself and then put it in the uh, total value here. Um, I do want to point out, you can see right here, I know it says it's, it's it's very small. So let's zoom in. So it tells you that this cell, use the cell to calculate the percentage of the project total or dollar value to add in the project total after all of these above markups have been applied. Okay. Now, if you choose to use the percentage of the project value, you must return to recalculate this. So if I go in here, let's say I put in 26% right now, and I go in here and I make changes to my bid worksheet, I must remember to come back in here and recalculate that value. If I don't, it's going to keep the original, the original total. It won't recalculate based on any uh, items that I've added to this bid worksheet. And as you saw just a second ago, you do have the ability, if you don't use the percentage, you can put in a total, a, a lump sum there. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. I should have shown that earlier. Uh, but any questions before we now move forward to creating our proposal to send to the client? All righty. Okay, so this is our proposal, but first let's come over to our scope of work because this information is going to generate with our proposal. All right, so right here, we've got our general notes. If you click this plus icon, here are all the general notes that are built into Red Team for you, right? You have the ability to create new general notes that will save it to this list, and then you can add it to your proposals later on. So we can apply this general or hazardous materials, elevator usage, all of this. I'm just going to add them so you can see what it looks like. Okay. So here we go. So we're building our general notes. So all of this information is here. And again, if you need to add anything to it, click the plus icon and create new. And then if you want to save this as a default to use in future projects, you've got that check button right there and just give it a name. So those are our general notes. Let's look at our exclusions and qualifications. So it's the same thing. I'm gonna click the plus icon. We've got something already for hazmat, excludes rock removal. So we'll add all of this as well. And again, you have the option to create additional exclusions and qualifications. Now this right here, trade notes. Anything that we entered in that little uh, note icon that I showed you, where I was like, when you're sending out your bid invites to your subs, tell them what you're asking them to bid on. That scope of work, that information is going to show up right here. So if you don't want it to, you do have the ability to delete it. Or uh, you can move the order of things.
right here. So now that we've done this, we can run a scope of work report. You click reports up here. This is what the, that document is going to look like. Okay, so you've got your company logo up here, you've got the project address, your company information's up here, and then here's a scope of work. So here's the general bid notes. Here are the notes that we entered for those cost codes. Another report. We run that exclusions and qualifications. There you go. So these are some good reports that Red Team will run for you. Adding your uh, your headers at the top with your logo and everything. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to come down to is our expanded division report. This is our base bid. So we're going to decide how do I want to show this to my client. Uh, right now, let me show you if I print it as is, I have the option to do expanded division report without profit, or I can show with profit. You decide. So let's look at it without profit. So I have not broken anything down. I left everything unexpanded the way, you know, so general conditions will have our, our value here and so on. Now, another option is with profit. We'll let that pop up. Second, I'm gonna close it again. Okay, with profit. There we go. And then it shows your profit down below. Okay. Now, I left everything closed off, unexpanded. If you want to break it down, you want to show the base bid to your customer with all of the cost codes or with just some. Let's say we want to show everything for carpentry. You just click it. It'll expand it. And then after you've gone through selecting what you want to expand, what you want to leave just as a single line item, you'll come back to the action and then it runs your report that way. Okay. So these have stayed as a single line item and the others have opened up. Any questions? All right, we're almost done. Okay, so now let's come on over to our proposal. All right, so we're going to build our proposal package. So Red Team does ask you, oh, whoops. Sorry, let me just clicked out of that too soon. Okay, here we go. So it's loading my project details. So here's my proposal package. Okay, yours is going to look different. You can add as many things as you'd like. So you can see my exclusions and qualifications are here. That scope of work. Uh, report that we ran over here is right there. And there's my expanded division report. And it's just the way that we set it up. I have these expanded, whereas these I don't. Okay. Now you have the ability to remove items. You can click it and then select delete. You also have the ability to insert additional items. You select insert, you can insert a blank page, you can upload files. Uh, so if you have, as you can see down here, I do have a uh, resume. So if you want to include your project manager's resumes, you have the ability to add those to your proposal to your customer as well. Okay, and Red Team will run some reports for you. So if you click that reports, right over here, you can see all of our reports that we have selected. So if we want to include that alternate report, we can add that. You just select it and it moves it over. In item notes, you can include that. And if there's something you want to remove, you just click it and it pushes it back over. Alrighty. So once this is done, when you're ready, you can email all of this in one nice email to your owner. Okay, so I'm just going to click print because I want to show you what it's going to look like. Now I'm just generating our report.
while we're working through this, feel free if anyone has any questions, pop in the chat, let us know. While that's generating, let me come over here. Let me just show you. We're going to take a look at what it looks like, but when you're ready, when you've approved it, you want to send it to your customer, you're just going to click send email. Okay. So here is the subject of the email. Red Team gives you the ability to change it. Here's where you can copy yourself if you'd like, you can copy anyone else. And then this is going to be the body of the email. And when you're ready, you'll just select send. Okay. Here's the proposal. Alrighty. So here's our cover page. Okay. So we've got our, our project name, the date. It's prepared for my client, Willow Rosenberg from Willow Rosen, from Rosenberg and team. And then as we go through, we'll be able to see, here's my letter to her. Okay. And you can see it says, please, invi uh, please find enclosed pricing on the bronze renovation located on so-and-so. It gives them the total contract value right there. We can go through. Here's our expanded division report, the scope of work, exclusions and qualifications, um, any contract documents. So all of our drawings, if I had included any specifications, if we had any revisions, everything would be listed here. Here's that resume. Here's our drawing log. And the client will get a link to the plan room so that they can download and view the drawings that way as well. Uh, and you do have the ability um, in the proposal to upload the drawings as well, if you want to, if you want to include them as sheets at the end of this. Okay, here are our bid item notes. And that's it. That's our proposal. So once we've sent this on on, on over to our customer, uh, we will be in the pending status of the project, and that's just exactly what it is. We are pending. We are waiting to receive the yes or no from uh, our our client. So once we've sent that over to them, we're going to come over to our project dashboard. We're going to select bidding and then set to pending. There we go. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this is just asking me to please check my budget because we did not, as you can see, we didn't go through the entire bid sheet, filling out every line by line item. So it's just letting you know, hey, your estimate worksheet, uh, these cost codes have a zero dollar value. So it's giving me the option to, do I want to go work on that real quick and fix it? But in my, my case, I'm just going to say no. Okay. So yes, I want to set my project to pending and there we go. So now my project has been set to pending status and this is where it will remain until our client gets back to us. Um, and we will have the ability to move the project back to bidding if we need to for any reason. Okay. All righty. So that has been our uh, bidding status training.